ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان كل الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My brothers and sisters pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the Quran and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to understand them to accept them in our heart and to implement them in our life Today inshallah we will be discussing about how a muslim practically can preserve the Quran and this will inshallah continue for another five or six khutbas because this is a very very serious issue because these two things are very confirmed from the teaching of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the quran will be taken away from the hearts and people will be emptied completely even one ayah will not remain in the heart of the people and the one who will be muslim in the evening will be converted in the morning and the one who was muslim in the evening uh, the, uh, in the morning he will become kafir in the evening and then another serious information which prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given to us is that when the people will come into that situation then there will not be any body who will be praying or fasting or paying zakat or anybody who will be even going for hajj so because the people will not go for hajj allah will not have any importance for the kaaba and then the people from ethiopia from africa a group of Ethiopians will come and they will destroy the Kaaba because there will not be anybody who will be performing Hajj and so there is no need for Kaaba also and nobody who will be praying nobody who will be learning Quran nobody who will be respecting the Quran so Allah will not let the Quran be dishonored by the people so definitely the Quran will go away from them so before that before that those who are alive and they are muslims and still they have respect for the quran then how practically we can we preserve the quran and to preserve the quran practically there are so many guidance which we get from quran and the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of them is the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is in sahih muslim where rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us that uh, how a muslim can practically preserve the quran and that he said he he said in sahih muslim the hadith number is 1169 where he says hasten to do good deeds before tribulation come uh, tribulations come like patches of dark night when a man will wake up as a believer and by the evening he will become a kafir and then he said or he he will wake up in the evening and he will be a believer at that time and by the morning he will become a disbeliever a kafir selling his religion for worldly gain so this is a very very serious information from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he says that do as many good as you can before this time comes to you before you may not know and there's another hadith of rasul sallam that our hearts are between the fingers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
This is a very authentic hadith the Prophet has said. Our hearts are between the fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You sarrifuhu kayfa yasha wa yuqallibuhu kayfa yasha. He can use your hearts the way he wants or he can change your hearts the way he wants. And that is why Prophet said when he was narrating this hadith, he told the people that make dua to Allah. Ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif qalbi ala deenik. Ya muqallib al-qulub, qallib qalbi ala ta'atik. That this is the dua which Prophet has taught us. That the one who can change the hearts and can use the heart in any way. Oh Allah, change my heart, turn my heart towards Islam and towards your obedience. So these are serious warnings that there will be a time a person can be a moment or a person can be a disbeliever within the period of four or five hours. So Rasulullah has told us this is the first part. Hasn't to do good deeds before tribulations come like patches of dark night. So this tribulation is the tribulation related to our Iman and Aqidah. Iman and Kufr. Belief and disbelief. So before that we have to do as many goods, uh, good deeds as we can. Then another hadith of Rasulullah which explains us that how a Muslim can really preserve the Quran. So this is one of the examples that a person can preserve the Quran by following the deeds and uh, the commands of the Quran and doing good deeds. Another hadith of Rasulullah where he says, read the Quran regularly. Read the Quran regularly. By the one whose hand Muhammad's soul is, it escapes from memory faster than a camel does when its time robs. When a person is tying the rope to the camel and if he gives a little, if he is careless, little bit careless about that, then the camel can run away and it is even <coughs> harder for those African hunters to catch the camel. It is still easy for them to catch, the, to hunt the lion, but the way Rasulullah is describing, camel is a plane in the desert. Remember that. Camel is like a plane in the desert. Camel is a plane of the desert. So that where Rasulullah is giving us the example that if you are, if a person owns the camel, and if he is careless about tying it properly, then the way, the past, the way the camel can run away from him, Quran can go faster than that from the memory of the people. And that is because if they don't read the Quran regularly. So what does this mean? That even if we know Surah Al-Fatiha, even if we know Surah Al-Fatiha, and if we don't read Surah Al-Fatiha regularly, there will be a time where even that little Surah will go away from our hearts and memories. So this is one of the guidelines of Prophet Muhammad and this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, and the hadith number is 5033. And in Sahih Muslim 791. And another hadith of Rasulullah, again reported by Abdullah bin Umar, he said that the Messenger of Allah said, The parable of one who knows, now this is to those who are half his Quran. The parable of one who knows the Quran by heart is as the parable of an owner of Hobul Camel. If he remains vigilant, he will retain it. And if he neglects it, it will go away. So same advice to the Hafiz of the Quran. Whether a person has memorized the whole Quran or whether a person has memorized only a little bit of it, but if you are vigilant, if you are careful, the Quran will remain with you. And if you are careless, Quran will go away from you. And as Prophet has said, even one ayah that you know, and if you are not vigilant, Allah will take away that one ayah from your heart, and you don't know what will be the status of your iman. Based on this, there are six rights 
that we owe to the Quran. If you want to be a true believer, and last time I was speaking about the preservation of the Quran, that we cannot preserve the Quran by protesting that in the New York the people are burning the Quran. They, are, they will not stop only to burning the Quran. You know what happened in the history of India? They have not only burned the Quran, they also have destroyed Masajid. They have also have destroyed the Madrasas. They have, in, this, in Spain, if you know the history of Spain, if you know the history of Istanbul, if you know the history of Kustuntunia, how the Jews and the Christians, what they did with the Islamic books. All the Islamic books, all the different sciences related to Islam, they destroyed them. And they are not stopped yet. They also destroyed the scholars. They have killed scholars. Not only that, they have made Muslim women who were left as widows. They made them pregnant to the kuffar. And this is what happened in Bosnia and Hesek. Now, majority of the women in Bosnia and Hesek, in Czechoslovakia, Muslim women are having, conceiving the children of the kuffar in their wombs. And this is the kuffar soldiers. They have destroyed everything. If you go today in Bosnia and Hesek, it's in Czechoslovakia, you know. It was a part of European country, and the Muslims were there. Now, if you want to build any small house in any land, before you dig the land one or two feet, you will find the skull is coming out of it. The bone is coming out of it. The leg is coming out of it. And who are they? The Muslims. Who are left? The women. Why? Because this kuffar policy is that now this woman will produce kuffar children from the Muslim women's womb. So they will not stop here, my brothers and sisters. And I told this, I gave this khutbah in Dubai. I gave this khutbah in Karachi. And after I gave this khutbah in Karachi, some people who were anti-Muslims, they went to the government, they said, look, this man came over here, he's an Indian, he's giving khutbah in Karachi, and he wants the Muslims of Karachi to go against Pakistani government. So he is an agent of India. And what was my question? What was my advice to the people? My advice to the people was that this is the time for us that we should go back to the Quran and Sunnah and we have to preserve it practically. We have to preserve this Quran practically. And if we don't preserve this Quran, and what is happening to the people in Spain, what is happening to the people in Palestine, what is happening to the people in any Kafir land, it is not far that the next day it will happen to us. And after this khutbah, I gave the similar khutbah in Dubai, and immediately after that, the Babri Masjid situation took place. Babri Masjid situation took place. I'm an Indian, but alhamdulillah, I'm not scared to say the truth because we Muslims are sleeping. We are thinking that the fire is, you know, burning that house. And my house is saved. This house where I am, I am saved. So we are like that. The fire is burning that house, so it's not burning my house, so we are saved. So my purpose of my khutbah, the purpose of my khutbah was, even in Dubai, that today, if the Hindus are demolishing Babri Mosque, and the Hindus in Delhi, they are burning the Quran, it's not for them. What is happening there, it's ha it will happen to us, because they are our brothers and sisters. They have the same faith. And because of that faith that is happening to them, and soon it will happen to us. And then after some times, there was a problem which was between Iraq and Kuwait.